My first initiators were really my parents and my grandparents in um, I'm Basque heritage and and I have a deep connection to land and to the outdoors and so they were my first big initiators. Uh, professionally later my big initiators have been uh, Joseph Campbell and Houston Smith and Margaret Mead. Every decade of our life has a gift and a challenge but most importantly, an important stranger, someone who appears that initiates us into a new interest or a new opportunity to facilitate our own growth and development. Every culture has a way to transmit their values and a way to transmit what has heart and meaning and what's connected with life purpose and like life calling. Initiation literally means the capacity to learn something new and demonstrate to someone else that I've learned it. And uh, which is really exploring uncertainty, exploring what's unknown. But in order to do that, I have to leave something and go forward. It's unfortunate in many ways that our rites of passage for teens or youth in many ways have been either um, um, drugs or alcohol or driving uh, or graduation rituals uh, uh, are markers of, of leaving something old and entering into something new or the first job or the uh, but they're not ritualized in so, some way all of the cultures of the world have somehow there's been a relationship between initiation and nature nature and uh, being connected to nature in some way. And I know for myself that uh, last 40 years has been really about making sure that people are reconnected to nature. And I take people out for three days or three night wilderness experiences uh, because I feel that the more that we're connected to outer nature, we're also connected to our own inner nature and the more that we're not connected to the outer nature we're disconnected from our own interior wilderness and our interiority or the mystery of um, our own purpose and who we are and what has heart and meaning. The combination of nature and silence and the ultimate befriendment of oneself or time to be alone uh, in nature without diversion uh, is one of the oldest forms cross-culturally of rites of passage, especially for young youth. I know my generation spent more time outdoors than indoors, and yet now there are more people spending time, especially our youth, spending more time indoors than outdoors. And there's become, just in the last 10 years, what's called, Richard Louv calls nature deficit syndrome, which is, you know, people not now having fear about going out into nature. Uh, uh, and I think there's uh, something that's primal, that inherent in the human spirit, regardless of our age, is that uh, there's nothing that moves rapidly in nature unless it's in danger. And uh, nature's rhythm is medium to slow. And we're creatures of nature. And so our natural inherent rhythm is medium to slow. And yet we have been moving in the fast lane for a long time and there's a lot we can do in the fast lane and we can create and we can produce and get overstressed, but there are two things we can't do in the fast lane. And one is that we can't integrate our experience or reflect. And secondly, um, we can't uh, in any way um, uh, not only integrate our experience, but uh, we can't develop or deepen our own character. It requires us coming back into our natural rhythm, which is nature's rhythm, which is medium to slow.
there's a longing in uh, there's in the DNA there is something within the human being that longs for that consciously or subconsciously and will f will attract people into their life for that wittingly or unwittingly or experiences they will choose experiences wittingly or unwittingly to have that in the DNA there is something within the human being that longs for that consciously or subconsciously and will f will attract people into their life for that wittingly or unwittingly or experiences they will choose experiences wittingly or unwittingly to have that we're consciously being initiated by all the important relationships in our lives and especially the ones that uh, capture our imagination, uh, the ones that somehow we find ourselves either learning uh, because of mutual interests or learning because they were drawn to their character or learning what we don't want, <laughs> uh, clarifying. You know, I often t think ab about who have been the people who have been great teachers about my values and that I've pushed hard against in some way. Uh, and I think we're hungry for that in this culture. We're hungry for a certain kind of rigor. Outward bound for years, uh, you know, was ahead of its time, you know, taking people of all ages in, in, into nature. I think uh, travel has been another initiatory process. Sometimes it's unconscious, sometimes it's a structured program. It's for all youth, you know, but that's where they've gotten their first interest is, oh, well, it works for troubled youth. Well, why wouldn't it work for anyone? Well, because it's archetypal. It's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. The United States has the highest suicide rate in the world between their youth and the elders than any other culture in the world. And we're also the most ageist society. And so we're, we're relearning how to build those intergenerational bridges. And I think rites of passage function that. Conscious rites of passage uh, really contribute to that. The rest of the world works intergenerationally. Youth rites of passage at this time, I think, are essential and elemental because the function of, of if, if we're not initiating our youth, they will self-initiate themselves, which they've already started to do through gangs or they've started uh, to do in other ways because it's a primal need. A, it's primal need to be initiated not by peers, not by peers. You know, that's a natural initiation that takes place, you know, the peer pressure and all of that, you know, but that's the time where they really need to be uh, uh, initiated also simultaneously for the individuation process by to have successful uh, individuation is that it can't be a peer initiation. It has to be uh, uh, an adult mentoring relationship or a, a practicing mentor as an elder in some, some way. It's needed now because we're so disconnected. You know, uh, we're d disconnected from nature. We're disconnected from each other. Uh, we're disconnected. Um, there's so much polarity uh, between face-to-face -face and the tech world and nature and urban, rural and urban. Uh, it's also an age where there's more violence. You know, all that energy, if it's not initiated, will go into violence. The relationship between mentorship and initiation is, is I, I, I think, two sides of the same coin. <laughs> uh, is that you cannot have mentorship without initiation, and you cannot have initiation without 
a successful initiation without mentorship or stewardship. So I think they're absolutely two sides of the same coin. And what's really true about initiation, it has a beginning, it has a midpoint, and it has an end, as every threshold does. This culture does not know how to do honorable closure well, knows how to initiate a lot of things. Uh, it's a visionary culture and a creative culture that has great diversity and they love anything that's new and exciting and faddish and radical and so on, etc. So we love beginnings, but we don't sustain at the midpoint. A lot of dropping out at the midpoint where it gets rigorous or there's accountability or uh, we hit vulnerable places. And so, uh, and then we may do very well at the beginning and the midpoint, but this culture has a lot of issues around closing well and ending well and, and uh, demonstrating that, you know, the skill level or demonstrating something else. Uh, what really matters most in each human being uh, is an original calling and a deep remembrance of an essential purpose or life dream or uh, gifts and talents that are arranged in a certain way in each human being uh, that uh, is like the original imprint or fingerprint. Uh, and we're all here for a purpose and rites of passage, uh, whether it's the mystery of birth or the mystery of death or the mystery of marriage or the mystery of initiation, which rites of passage is the mystery of initiation, uh, delivers us to that primal originality that lives within each human being that uh, cannot be garnered or duplicated by anyone else.